So I was looking for a time and a place, and I happened to see a really old Doctor Who rerun on public television. And in this very old show, has to have been done 50 years ago, the Doctor had picked up a young Scotsman from 1745. And this was a very nice looking young man who appeared in his kilt. And I said, well, that's kind of fetching. And I found myself still thinking about this the next day in church. And I said, well, you know, you want to write a book. It doesn't really matter where you've said it. The important thing is you pick a point and get started. So I said, fine, Scotland, 18th century. So that's where I began, knowing nothing about Scotland or the 18th century, having no plot, no outline, and no characters, <laughs> nothing but the rather vague images is conjured up by the notion of a man in a kilt. That's quite the fine figure, Mr. McTavish. I... I wrote Outlander, as I say, for practice. I wasn't going to show it to anyone. And uh, things happened, and it not only got published, but they gave me a three-book contract. Now, I never said it was a trilogy. I said, there's more. Diana's books are so, so vast. They've got so many wonderful, intricate characters, and there's, there's so much backstory to each one, and she reveals more and more each book. This book series has become a television series, uh, which is absolutely the best that could be hoped, and uh, so grateful that it worked out this way. People have been trying for years and years and years to make a feature film of Outlander, and frankly, it can't be done. The story is just too big, too complex, and too tightly interwoven. They wanted to do a two-hour movie, two-hour movie, two-hour movie, and I said you, you wouldn't do them justice. It needs to be a television series, it needs to be episodic, and you need to see all the little details that Diana so richly created.